the New York City Council meeting to order Monday, June 19, 2017, 6.30 p.m. A meeting in the in this beautiful Goodrich Memorial Library. I'm I, probably the room is bigger. I have to speak up louder. Thank you. I'm used to a smaller room. Is there any way we can turn that down a little? Oh, you have the mic? Oh. Well, I can probably. <coughs> We'll start that again. We'll call the Newport City Council meeting to order from Monday, June 19th, 6.30 p.m., the assembly room at the Goodrich Memorial Library, 202 Main Street, Newport. All members of the City Council are present. Others include James Johnson, our clerk treasurer, and Laura Dogan, our city manager. The next item will be the coronation of our Centennial Grand Marshal, honoring 100 on the 100. And I'm going to turn it over to our city manager. Thank you, uh, Mayor Manette. Thank you, Tony Parmelo. Thank you, Ernie Parmelo, for coming here and bringing your dad. So first and foremost, what I want to say is thank you all for coming out here tonight. I know this is an unusual location. It's an unusual event. And we're going to have some joy tonight. One of the first things that I want to point out is this beautiful room and this beautiful <laughs> building. Were it not for Jim Johnson and his beautiful wife, Nicole, and Linda Lucier, this room would be looking very different. And Carol, Carol Nicholson, the librarian, everybody's godsend right here. So Carol allowed this meeting to take place, and Jim and Nicole and Linda went gangbusters cleaning this room. I think it's dirty, excuse me. <laughs> but making this room as beautiful as it is, the tablecloth. I want to point out that beautiful photograph that Tony gave to the city back on April 14th. And I'd also like to point out that flag. That's when I was a young kid. That's right. <laughs> That flag um, I'd like to draw your attention to for just a few minutes, please. The interesting thing about that flag is that nobody knows the origination of that flag. That has been in a closet for about 20 years. And this is, as far as we know, its first unveiling in a very long time. We don't know the history of it, so please take a look at it, all you history buffs. And if you have any background information about it, please let us know. It's very exciting. So having said that, tonight we are going to kick off our centennial celebration. Our centennial celebration was made possible by Tony Pomelo. The city is grateful to you and thanks you for that. Although a group has been actively working on it for about a year, and we've got another year of planning ahead of us, we'd like to announce that the centennial is going to be a terrific event. And please mark your calendars June 29th through July 4th. 2018. Tonight, we're going to honor you as our Grand Marshal of the Centennial. And to that end, we have a little surprise. Please bear with me.
Tony, you are the official Grand Marshal of this new city of Newport Centennial Celebration. We wanted to give you a little taste, and we wanted to give the community a little taste of the excitement that your centennial planning committee has, and the quality of events that we have planned to honor our fine city. We couldn't do it without you, as you know, and we're absolutely thrilled. Some of the events that we have planned are about 250 reenactors, both French and British, including boats, are gonna be setting up an encampment at Prouty Beach for the weekend. A huge parade, complete with marching bands on Saturday, chicken pot pie and other delicious supper menus throughout the celebration, community arts and museum displays, fireworks, and every day there's gonna be lots of events scattered about the city. We are truly excited. Thank you for supporting us and coming here tonight to help us kick off this wonderful centennial celebration. And happy birthday. <laughs> grow from the very beginning. Tonight we are celebrating 100 birthdays for both you and the city. How many people can say that? It's amazing. One. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a couple of um, memories for you that um, we're going to ask Jim that's going to take you down memory lane over the past 100 years. And happy birthday, Tony. Uh, I'm just going to go down through a few things that happened to the city in your lifetime. So on March 5th, 1918, the village of Newport and West Derby combined to become the city of Newport. At that time, the city had paved streets, cement streets on Main Street, large hotels, many businesses, and barren. Uh, West Derby was kind of barren. The city organized West Derby School became the East School, Glen Derby School became the South School, Newport High and Greater School became the West School. Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> Newport High School was built in 1925, and it cost $98,000 to build it in 1925. In 1936, the International Club was the last dance floor in New England capable of holding 2,000 dancers. You probably danced on that floor once or twice. The performers such as Louis Armstrong, Les Brown, Rosemary Clooney, Cap Calloway, Glenn Miller, and the Dorsey Brothers entertained there while in route between Montreal and Boston. Newport had four hotels at the turn of centuries. We met for Magog House, built in 1839, had 188 rooms. It burned in 1906. The Hearst Hotel was across the street. The Raymond House was located on a piece of land where the present Causeway Bridge and the Long Bridge, and the Long Bridge Merge. The Bellevue Hotel was built in 1873 and retained the Newport House in 1891, which was demolished in 1973. It was located in the site of the People's Bank now. From 1850 to 1948, there were a number of steamers on the lake, and maybe you rode on one of these. Uh, steamer, there was a, the uh, Stars and Stripes, the Yoko, the John A. Uh, best known was the Mountain Maid, 1850-1870. The, the Lady of the Lake was the most famous. It was 167 feet long and sailed between 1867 and 1915. Her hull was made in Scotland. She, her boilers were made in Montreal. Uh, the Anthem was 100 feet long. She was built in 1907 and carried 300 passengers. A daily trip between Magog and Quebec. The Anthem was sold in 1948 and taken back to Canada. In 1920, the Greenwood started a bus line. It, it, uh, became, it began, became Vermont Transit in 1939 and served from Burlington West and White River Junction to the south. The Burns Theater opened on April, uh, September 16, 1915. 
and the admission to go to a movie then was 25 cents. It's about eight dollars and 25 cents now. <laughs> uh, the Municipal Airport opened in 1945. The oldest continuous business in the city of Newport is Ferris Greenhouse, and it began operation in 1869 and is still in operation today. The first hospital in Owens County was Owens County Memorial, and that was in 1923. Just a little tidbit, in 1929, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth visited Newport on their way to Montreal. They stopped and had lunch at one of the hotels. Uh, Newport High School closed in 1967, same year that Newport North Country Union High School opened, so it's been 50 years. So now Newport can claim many important individuals as their own, including Vermont Governor Joshua Grell, George Prouty, Lieutenant Governor David Camp, U.S. Senator Winston Prouty, Vermont Secretary of State Harry Black, Aaron Grell, Interstate Commerce Commission Member Charles Prouty, Supreme Court Justice Rudolph Daly, Astronaut David Gravelin, and New Hampshire Governor Lane Gwinnell. Charles Adams, who was the founder and owner of the Boston Bruins and the descendant of Martin Adams, was the first settler, and now we have Antonio Pablo. <laughs> Happy birthday. So with that, let's get the party started. <laughs> Happy birthday, Tony. Happy birthday, Newport City. Let's eat some cake. <laughs> we have some cake in the next room, and we'd like to invite everybody to join us in there. Carrot cake and chocolate stout. I'm not kidding. <laughs> so please, um, a few moments of levity during our meeting. Please come in and join us. Hobnob, rub elbows, enjoy yourself. <laughs> I can't tell you how important the summit is because my brother was born in 1909, I was born in 1917, my son, that one there, right there, uh, was born in 47, my other son was born in 57, and Terry was born in 87. Then I have a grand, great grandson who was born in 2017. So there's only 100 years between him and I. <laughs> You know, when I look at all those towns, and I'm sure that I'll say something that you, you probably never heard, uh, way down there, uh, one of the big department stores, a big furniture store, and downstairs was a nine hole golf course underneath for many years to, to come on that. And, and uh, or changes, and of course, uh, uh, in, in the, as you know, in the 27, that's when all the changes to a site coming in. J.J. DeBerry was here before that. But Mark Every Ward and, and uh, WT grads and, and, and the uh, and people both down there. And of course, Abby Trishman and, and uh, Woolworths was there. And uh, uh, Jay Dingerberry's, where is he for a long time ago? Because I tripped windows. And I tell you, frankly, I, I, I said this is the best success of my life. I was walking by one time and this fellow brother, Al Miller. Uh, I rap in the I rap in the window and he says, "Come on in." So I I, I walked in. He says, "You want to help me?" And I said, "Yes." I start decorating the windows with him. And 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 uh, he said, "Where'd you learn to do those things?" I said, "No, I never did." Well, I was 13 years old. And so he says, "You want to work with me?" And I said, "Yes." I worked that night. I worked every night that week. And he says, "He says, you know, you turn it a nice window." Uh, and I he says, "If I I can get you a solid job," he says, "To trim all the windows." So I, I started working with, when I was 13 years old, I worked every night of my life through windows until I was 17 years old. I made $10 a week. That was off. <laughs> I met uh, all the other kids. And I, I had a great, great time. And, and uh, you know, uh, so many people, I never got a nickel from anybody, but I worked for it. Like for example, uh, I remember I, I used to go to, uh, to have a store, for instance, I'd say, can I work here? He says, yeah, you, you can, I need 100 packs potatoes, I mean, two flights of stairs, I bring 150 pounds each time, and I get one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> but I wait at nine o'clock, because nine o'clock, 
they had a, a, all the pastry was 50 percent off. <laughs> so I come back and buy one dollar. I got I really got two dollars out of it. <laughs> Another thing I get for for uh, Sunday's uh, Father's Day, you know, one of the cards says, you know, have it, have a lot of money not that bad, but your 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 children and grandchildren. They'll always appreciate it. <laughs> As, <absolutely. laughs> He's ready. But anyway, uh, as, I, as I mentioned to you, you know, I've lived in, in uh, Burlington since 1942, and, and uh, uh, but I still call Burlington my own because I remember Mr. Lawson, Mr. Amit Blake, and the Pravis, and all that stuff I do so well. And, and what cute, cute story that I've said to many, many, many people. Uh, and and uh, uh, we had no money at all, and, and uh, my father was very old, and we had, couldn't take care of him, he was really, really sick. So I put him in a car, I brought him to the hospital, I didn't ask anybody, I walked in, I said, you know, dad's going to be in the hospital. So, so, uh, so they said, uh, I was about 18, 19 years old, the nurses were about 18, 19 years old, so I, we got along pretty good. <laughs> and so they, they brought him into the ward. It was maybe five or six people in the ward. I said, I don't want him in the ward. They said, what do you want him? I said, in a private room. And they said, uh, uh, you know how much a private room costs? I said, how much? Twelve dollars a day. Because don't forget, twelve dollars a day. But that means you said, the managers are first for the dollars, but they started all at twenty-five dollars a day. Though. So uh, they brought him into a private room, and I guess they told the board of directors, and Mr. So the board apparently said, Tony, Tony will pay us. And he, he was, I, I bought him in, in uh, October, he died in, in February, so I probably owed him some eight hundred dollars, you know. So I, I did pay him back, so I gave him a hundred thousand dollars later on. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they want to check me interest on it too. <laughs> So uh, at the same time, I'm kind of sorry that they didn't see the, the handwriting on the wall when I called the uh, AB5 buddy, you know, uh, because I, I called Bill, I said, look, I'm all done. And I told him it was in my stage, in my office, and everything else, and, and we were waiting for that. He says, I'm going to wait, I'll come back with $5 million. I said, you're all done. I don't do it. You haven't kept your word for it. And I, I pulled it. And I think at that time I was highly grateful because that was supposed to be, the shopping center was going to be all torn down and, and, and built a nice competitive center. And, and uh, it would never happen. I would end up, like one man who said the paper, and he says, this one under me, Tony Paolo, he says, had told us about what's going to happen. And he said, on his way out, he says, one thing I want is a 400 room hotel in, in Newport, Vermont, that I want to know. So, so uh, I'm sorry for those people. I'm sorry for the uh, what happened here, but you know, it happened. You can't, you, you can't, you can't say we can't do it. Of course we can do it. We will do it. So anyway, I'm sure glad that, that uh, you invited me, and I'll be here next year. <laughs> would very much like to sing you happy birthday. Can I go you guys? I'm, I'm not going to sing. Karen, you start. You start. <laughs> All right. Rick, you play music. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
Okay, we're going to reconvene a city council meeting, and we're going to move um, to the item number three real quick, which is to approve the minutes of June 5th, 2017. And I would entertain a motion. Motion has been made. Is there a second? Made and seconded. Discussion on the minutes? Then hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. The next item is comments by members of the public. And um, I'm going to turn it over to Ernie Pomelo, who's going to give us an update on the waterfront plans right. behind Vista. So um, maybe if I hate to cover Dad's photographs, but it might be the easiest to have the public and the council see it simultaneously. So um, as they say, a, um, a picture is a thousand words. And um, as you know, when I came before the city and I said, you know, we're going to save the supermarket, we're going to, so we're going to renovate it and we're going to work on a bunch of stuff and we're going to fix up the shopping center. Well, we did that. In the meantime, we've been working diligently on the waterfront as a kind of a connector to downtown. Downtown is part of us and we're part of downtown. And I thought the more we could glue that together, the better. This center for years had kind of turned us back on the waterfront. So how, when we started to redo this whole thing, how could we create an environment that was really good to the citizenry of the community, open it up, make the shopping center look better, do a win-win. So we've been working with the community. Tom's been great. We've been working with Laura. Paul came to the last meeting. We've, got, we've met with the A&R this morning. Uh, we've met with Mary Pat and, and Robert on trees. And we've worked with the magic of what has happened here, and I won't get into great detail, I'll just show you. Um, is, that's okay, we'll see that. The, the connection to your existing bike path, it's a walking path through our property. We'll continue to work with the neighbors to extend it, and we're working on grants and a whole bunch of other elements. What has happened here, which is kind of a wonderful combination, is that not only do we open the waterfront up and add docks on both sides, hopefully Nathan will be able to use this, people will come in and shop, could park there, walk up to uh, downtown, uh, use our facility all day. Um, so anyway, we've done a lot of analysis, and as you go a little further and you go a little deeper into this, um, we've actually done a couple things. We've created benches and docks and openings and uh, picnic areas and ca kayak access. But the other key thing that we found and we shared this week is that we've met Act 64. Our engineers have been working in tandem with a number of local groups and the community and the state to determine how to deal with an inch runoff off the parking lot, absorb it, and not hit the lake. So the, the bike path has all of a sudden created um, aesthetics. It's created some, hopefully, as we talked to Karen, some economic stimulus, um, access to the lake, and created some elements. But it's also done, it's, rest it's, it's restorative, it's environmental, it's dealing with the uh, runoff and the stormwater. So it's a win, 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 win. And we're working in collaboration, and I wanted to share with the council where we are with this. Um, there will be no out-of-pocket cash from the city. We'll pay for everything. But uh, Tom and the team with Laura have uh, been working to do installation. And then we'll give you a permanent uh, easement and access over it and parking. And I, I can't imagine anything that has more connectivity between this complex and the community. Um, and the lake is our, both of them, it's our the city's jewel, and we're gonna be able to open it up um, a lot more. So anyway, that's in a nutshell. I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm gonna leave these prints again. I think we left the use of some, and hopefully, I'm hoping that if everything goes according to plan, um, we're submitting to uh, Act 250 tomorrow, but because we've met with everybody, um, and they've all given us a thumbs up. Um, there should be no hearing, and we'll have an administrative um, permit in 30 days, and we're going to start construction, and you're going to see this by the fall. So I, I really, it's been a, a, an honor to work with this community. 
I just heard a story about somebody that was here 100 years ago. I'm a newbie by comparison. <laughs> uh, but we've been having some real open, transparent interaction with how we help downtown. If downtown is better, we're better. If we're better, downtown is better. So um, I thank you for what you did tonight and the collaboration that we've created over the last year, particularly as it relates to this. So um, anyway, hopefully uh, the next time we'll get together, we'll be celebrating the opening of the uh, walking path. Thank you. Thank you. See anybody raise your hand, so. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. This is a perfect example of a public-private partnership that's really going to help. I was concerned about the Act 64 with the shop and classroom. This really, because I've really been involved um, studying the Act 64 requirements and have been in Montpelier a lot, and this really will help show, we're actually leading the, leading the way with the state. Yeah, our, uh, this, is, this is actually going to be a model. A model, right. Um, and towards the, we didn't expect to be able to address the stormwater elements as positively and effectively and as inexpensively. By doing the aesthetic and the restoration and the waterfront, we've added swales and elements and the like, and it takes care of that first inch, um, and it doesn't reach the lake. It's great for the lake, it's great for the city. And hopefully we'll have a, a tremendous amount of use by, you know, Newport citizens. So um, and in the surrounding area. So we're delighted. We hope it'll help Nathan and the outdoor gear group um, and uh, help a, create a, a stimulus that you've all been working. You've done a fabulous job with your walking paths, bike paths, waterfront. This is simply an extension of it. Hopefully we'll amplify what you've already done. So and and having the relationship that we've had working with Tom and Laura and, and Paul and the like, um, this is a win-win. And it won't cost the city a dime out of pocket, just what they've allocated in their existing equipment and their existing person power. Um, and we'll cover all of the, uh, the, the cash dollars. So, and everybody wins. So it's a, like you were saying, Paul, it's a, it's a perfect public-private partnership. So, uh, and it has been for quite some time, because I think as we'd indicated that we were Kind of uh, questioning which way we were all going, and we all decided to go forward. <laughs> so, once again, I want to thank Tony for coming yeah. and for your support. Well, I heard you. You just said it didn't cost the city anything. I got you want to check with the city all the time. We're leaving now. <laughs> No, we're leaving now. <laughs> Four or five years ago, they, they uh, had a big, uh, I was at the base of the Seattle office, and it was packed. And uh, so uh, everybody spoke, and I heard that he said, you know, he says, uh, he says, I'm probably the only son that retired before his father. <laughs> probably true. So, so anyway, I, I got up and I said, you know, earlier, you mentioned that, I said, you know, you get a high cheek, you do sailing, you're in Europe, and you're like, what the hell are you going to work? <laughs> what? We're leaving. What? <laughs> this is where the company is. I think you have a hell of a job here, and, and uh, I think you've done as good or better than what I could have done. Okay, we're good. Okay. Could, could you grab that for one second? Nice to see you. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. And we'll see you for sure next summer. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get a 100 year old car. We'll be 100 in the city again. So yes. We're going to have a good time. Hang around so I can see you again. I'll be a. <laughs> Okay. Oops. Slow elevator. <laughs> oh, that's one floor to go. Okay. It's coming. We'll be there. Okay. Adios. Bye. No, we're good. Thank you.
thank you very much. Sure. Thank you for coming. <coughs> Any other comments by members of the public? Uh, Laurie Grimm in Port City. Um, I, this is just something I've noticed in the last week and especially today. Um, I'm just wondering if, if there's any way for our public works to look at the traffic lights. Um, I'm wondering why the traffic light, which I think may be a state light uh, at the bottom of the access road um, and that road there is flashing again this summer. Um, it's causing a lot of trouble for people coming off the access road at the Sunset Bank. And today I was coming through about quarter of quarter after, excuse me, quarter till five, um, down through by Cumberland Farm and from uh, the Derby area. And that light is so short that uh, one or two cars is coming through it, and there were ten cars behind me. Uh, and I'm just wondering if there's any way that uh, we can get our public works to look at those two sites. Where's the short light? Uh, the Cumberland Farm is very short. Yeah. Tom, still here? Tom? Yeah, he left. <laughs> <laughs> now, the light by the Sunset Bank, you have put in a repair call for that, correct? Yes, but uh, there is only one company that, other than the state of Vermont, so I'm kind of waiting to hear back from them. The one company that uh, is left that does that type of work is so busy right now. He, I called him and two weeks later he finally called me back and said he couldn't come. So I'm gonna try to rely on the state of Vermont. And if you're talking the other side by fire station, mm -hmm. is that the other light you're talking about? Mm -hmm. The other light at Cumberland Farms. Oh, up at Cumberland Farms? Yeah, it's really short. Today, uh, one car was turning left to go down by subway and they were waiting for cars to come up through, and, and uh, the, the light turned red, turned green, and then all the cars are coming, and they turned, I mean, literally, it was, it was nobody could get through. So it was the, very The fire up. station one's the same. Yeah, it's very short coming down the access road. Western yeah. Avenue is very long. Yes. Well, I, yeah, I asked about the fire station, because we don't own that one. That's the yeah. state's, That's the and they've state. been working on it, but. That's been the camera. My name is Hugh McNeil. I live in Newport, right in Newport. I had just uh, had a couple of things to say. I've got one comment uh, on uh, this picture I'm looking at in the background with all the cars on Main Street. Beautiful. I commend Tony for trying to bring back what was here a few years ago, born and raised in Newport. I remember Newport being uh, sidewalks full on a Friday night. You couldn't walk on the sidewalk. It was so busy. And that reminds me of this picture. But we don't have that anymore. But what we have is a, an assessment of this city's taxes that allows us who have lived here all our lives to want to move out because we can no longer live here. That's how bad it is. That's, it was the worst assessment. Mine went up $80,000. My brother's went up $100,000. It's ridiculous for what we're getting out of Newport City. There's nothing here. There's a building on Main Street that's assessed lower than my house is which is ridiculous. <coughs> this is Main Street. <coughs> this is the comment I want to make. It, the assessment for that I got, I did go to complain. I don't know what's going to become of it, but it's getting to the point I can't live here anymore. And the residents that have been here all their lives can't live here anymore. Maybe people moving in that have money and can afford, afford to live in this city, maybe that's what we're going to get but not the locals. I can't, I can't afford to live here. That's it. The other comments I want to make, or the questions I have, are two. Number one, I, am, I have never gotten an answer, or do I know, I've asked several people, what happened to the ice out money that 
went in Lake Memphis Magog when the statue fell in the ice. I had a vested interest in that. I put some money toward the date and time that it went out. I had heard nothing as to where that money went or who got the uh, prize. Number one. Number two, is it a uh, big secret? Is this, uh, in, in the interest of transparency, uh, we lost a uh, secretary to the uh, city manager. Mm -hmm. What happened? No one tells me why she was let go. Is that a big secret? I have no clue why she was let go. And in the interest of transparency as a taxpayer, I think I should know that. And I should know where the money went for the ISA. Those are the two questions I have, and I have not got an answer. There's never been anything published on any of that. So that's my questions and my comments. Thank you. As far as the money for the ISA went to the rec department, correct? That was awarded, and um, I'll find out from just who won it. And that was, you don't know? No. Sure. Okay. And as far as the other issue, that is a personnel matter that is not discussed in public. Okay. Keep it a big secret. No, personnel yeah. matters are never discussed. I thought this council public. was transparent. Obviously it is. Well, I won't get into an argument, but personnel matters are not public information. It is right. confidential information. That is all I can say on that matter. Any other comments by members of the public? Yes. I'm Neil with the cell. I've been a resident for 25 years, and I just wanted to say how nice it is to hear some good news. We're inundated right now with really negative, really difficult news. And to see Tony Pomerlow, who's celebrating his 100th anniversary, who's been so generous with this community. And I happened to benefit from Tony Pomerlo many years ago. He started a scholarship fund at St. Michael's College that I was a recipient of 30 years ago. He's done so much good work in so many places. And thank you to Laura, to Paul, to the entire city council, and to the Pomerlos um, for caring enough about a community to, to reinvest in it. We are the greatest resource we've got. We have the finest natural resources in this area. But our people are always our finest resource. So we need to remember that um, you know, we are members of a community. Civilization comes from the Latin root for the term member of my household. And we've forgotten that we're members of one another's households. And we need to find shelter in each other. So thanks for helping me to remember that we're here to find shelter in one another. In the good and the bad, in the, uh, in the moments of challenge and assessments and all of these other things that are really important to speak to. But it's important also to remember generosity and some of the good news. So thank you. Any other comments from anyone in the audience? Yes. Just don't want to let uh, Mr. McNeil stand out there all by himself with regard to the reassessment. I want to let you know that there are any number of people in this community who are really upset uh, with the reassessment and also with the increase in the budget um, for the next year. Anything else? Then we'll move on. Next item is municipal offices, municipal offices copy machine replacement recommendation and vote. Laura? So the municipal <coughs> office copy machine was purchased outright in 2009 for $8,300. It's dying and will soon be dead. We are paying uh, an exorbitant service fee because of the number of repairs that it's required on a monthly basis. At this point, um, I'm recommending that we replace it. We need to do something with this machine. And what I've done um, is provided a worksheet for you where you can see uh, the results of our solicitation. We're recommending the Canon Solutions of America, Canon Image Runner Advance 6565i. That's the least expensive on a lease. And you'll see that there is um, a monthly, uh, we're recommending a 60 month lease, which is $141.25, and the um, $33.75 monthly service contract. That's about um, 
seventy dollars more than we're currently paying, but we're getting a brand new machine with um, better features. It's faster. It's more up to date. It'll be more efficient. And I'm uh, recommending that we lease that machine. And I'm asking for council vote if anybody has any questions. <coughs> questions from council members. Mm -hmm. Are there any local providers who might be able to provide the service? The closest one we found was W.B. Mason, and if you take a look at that, you're going to see that they didn't include a lot of the details that we need. So the um, Canon is the same one that the um, junior high uses, a lot of the schools use around here, and um, for that reason, that was why that was why. So there's nobody in New York or St. John's Mary? W.B. Mason is the closest shop. Lindenville. Yeah, that's there was Lindenville. Whatever it was, Lindenville Print Shop is now part of W.B. Mason. That, that is a close up. Yeah. Any other? We spent about four months worth of meetings talking about this at the church. <laughs> came to a similar conclusion. So. And I can tell you the Canon, the, the Canon copiers are a good brand to copy here. Yeah, on that aspect. But yeah, unfortunately, uh, Linville offers purchased by W.B. Mason out of Massachusetts. So. Very different company than one of the Linville offices. Right. So I would recommend we go with the city manager's recommendation and allow the leasing of the Canon copy. I'll make that motion. <coughs> motion been made. Is there a second? I'll second. Made and seconded. Discussion on that motion. Who moved that? I'm just wondering, um, is there any chance that the city purchased outright the old machine of um, any kind of, not buyback, but anything that, I mean, is there anything salvageable in this old machine? Is there a possibility, is it possible to donate it to somebody? Is it, I mean, are we just going to send it off to the graveyard of the sky or the in a landfill? The recommendation is to um, recycle it, discard it. Uh, they're one of the companies that were not um, recommending would give us thirteen dollars and fifty cents for it. So it's really dead. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Anything else? Then all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item is the loader purchase recommendation. And we received a memo um, from Tom Bernier about the new 2017 loader. And he had all the um, bids and prices. All part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and <coughs> questions from council members on this? Same question. Is there anybody more local than these guys that are Morris, Morris Town, Willis, Tim, Colchester, and Milton? No, it sells that big equipment. They have higher equipment, but they don't sell larger equipment like that. Construction equipment. Thanks. Yeah. Um, um, this is replacing which, which unit? The 2004 John Deere order. Okay. And that has, that was purchased when? In 2004. So it was purchased new back then? Yeah. How many miles on it? Uh, how many hours on it? Any idea? I don't remember. It's, so it's, it's got to be well beyond its scope anyways as far as the... Well, the, 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 the idea behind it was that as most of them were offering us a really good trade because it's still worth something. Um, we've had issues with that loader right from the get-go with, uh, with the paint job. We fought, fought with them for two years before they finally painted it and the paint job they put on it was no better than the first one they gave us. And so it's, it's getting right in places. Um, so it was a good time to get rid of it before we have a major malfunction of a motor, which would probably then it'd be, it'd be uh, we'd get no value out of it. 
And last question, we do have the funds in your budget for this? Yes, we do. Thank you. Other questions from, from council members? Then I would entertain a motion and recommend the approval of the purchase of a case 621G from Beauregard Equipment for $106,500. Mayor, I'll make that motion. A motion to be made. Is there a second? Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion on that motion? Then hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, where's uh, Beauregard Equipment out of? Beauregard Equipment is out of where, Tom? Colchester. Yeah, Colchester. Colchester. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Moving on. Mr. Johnson. <coughs> Oh, we didn't vote yet? Oh, okay, it was a question before we voted, sorry. Then all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. Mr. Barber, can we throw a loop of yes? <laughs> okay. Okay, the next item will be new business. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. I don't have anything. Mr. Sinet. Very briefly, I'd like to offer congratulations uh, to Bob Wilson and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and St. Mark's and Christine on they were both ordained priests in the Episcopal Church um, last weekend. It was a wonderful, wonderful ceremony, and it's uh, two uh, two homegrown uh, priests is, is is a great accomplishment for a community and for individuals. So to recognize them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anything else? Some new business? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Okay. We'll move to old business. Mr. Johnson. No. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Warren, anything? No. I have nothing that I need to. Anything, Mr. Chanette? No, sir. Laura, I think just to announce the next Centennial Planning Committee is July 13th, 5 to 7. Okay. And the next regularly scheduled City Council meeting will be Monday, July 3rd, 2017, not 2013. <laughs> 2017, Monday, July 3rd, 2017. 6.30 p.m. at the City Council. Okay, and now we need a motion to adjourn at 7.45. So moved. Motion made, is there a second? Second. Made and seconded, discussion, then all those in favor say aye. Opposed, the ayes have it, motion carries.